playing the Radical Latino Show. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands in the air for New York's very own. Latino is taking you to another level. What's poppin', my people? Welcome back to another episode of the Radical Latino Show. It's your host, the Radical Latino. What's poppin', my people? How y'all doing? I know I sometimes I upload for a week and then I go missing for another week and then I'll upload two weeks later and all that. I got a lot of shit going on, a lot of things. I know I always say that, but it's true because I'm always behind the scenes working on other things and to bring you guys more content so you already know i'm back at bodega goya bean studios i'm right behind the 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 mexican ladies that's bagging up putting the beans in the cans and all that you know what i'm saying so um uh, yeah <laughs> how was y'all week we uh i i know the weather's been crazy uh especially in new york it went down to like i think was it negative like negative five or something like that and then zero and then it stayed at zero for a minute but that's nothing compared to like illinois like i heard in chicago was like negative 55 or something like that like it was like colder than the than antarctica or something like you know what i'm saying like what yo i know it passed but listen any if i got any chicago listeners yo keep your head up you know uh i hope y'all get through it you know what I'm saying? I hope, you know, you guys get an electrical blanket or something, you know, keep your asses warm and all that. But, um, you know, everything's been, you know, crazy over here too. You know, these, these weather changes are wild, B. These weather changes are wild. And apparently there's no global warming. You know what I'm saying? Go figure, right? So, um, other things that I want to, uh, touch on is, uh, I'm, I'm gonna touch on a bunch of things, you know, uh, Netflix is a big thing that I'm seeing a lot about also the Empire guy and you know the main topic you know what I'm saying so I want to first of all say if you guys want to call up to the show and leave a voicemail and I can answer your questions or concerns or whatever the case is call up the show the numbers in the description just hit me up and you know just leave a voicemail all the voicemails i get are either some racist ass voicemails or like you don't they don't say nothing y'all don't say nothing you know what i'm saying so i just delete those you know what i mean but um you know i i see a lot of people you know showing me support and it's always through comments or whatever the case is but remember guys you know just call up if you guys want to interact interact with the show i am a huge component of interacting with my supporters and all that um i got a lot of things lined up coming this you know 2019 you know what i'm saying i got a lot of things that coming up i got a bunch of interviews lined up and all that, that i'm taking care of or whatever the case is but um without further ado um let's let's you know let's talk about the first thing that i want to talk about so netflix put it upon themselves to release a uh, like original movie. I believe it was based on the book. I, I'm not too sure. But they decided to release an original movie called Siempre Bruja. In, in English, it translates to Always a Witch, right? And they put out two trailers. And these trailers were extremely extremely when i say extremely i'm talking about extremely misleading they knew they were fucking up they knew that what they were gonna put out was some bullshit so i'm gonna I re, i'm gonna give you guys basically the synopsis of the movie on how they wanted it to be perceived you know what i'm saying this basically this takes place in colombia you know what I'm saying? And this is about basically an Afro-Latina, you know, shout out to my sisters, you know, my, my Afro-Latinas out there. 
It's about an Afro Latina who time travels to present day. That's basically it. She is a witch. She time travels because she she was about to get you know burned um you know at the stake or whatever because she's a witch. She time travels and that's it. And she gets into little you know teenage mayhem's and stuff like that. She was a witch in the in like the 17th century, 16th um 1646, and she time travels to now you know 2019. You know what I'm saying? So just by reading that. You don't think nothing crazy about it. You know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, hey, whatever. She's going to get into some teenage, um, you know, mayhem or whatever the case is. And on top of that, the whole thing is, you know, is, is shot in, in Spanish. You know what I mean? So to me, that's even that's even great, you know, because I can understand it. And I'm over there, you know, talking uh, talking about, yeah, cojala. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, esta puta. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm over there, you know, so, talking my bullshit. You know? And, you know, just by hearing the description, you're like, ah, it's, you know, it's whatever. You know, who will find racism and bullshit in this? It's just about a witch. The time travels. Who cares? Well, my friends, I'm sorry to disappoint. But... When we live in a system of white supremacy, and yes, I'm, I'm gonna say it again because I know that word hates you guys. You guys hate that word. When we live in a system of white supremacy, everything under it is not as innocent as it seems. Not at all. When this thing premiered, mind you, it, this is this is not uh this is not a coincidence that this thing was released on uh you know um on on uh on uh black history month you know what i'm saying this is not a coincidence it's not a coincidence whatsoever it got released on black history month not a coincidence when you see the first episode of this bullshit of this trash shit i got to episode three and I turned it off midway. I'm like, I fucking can't. I'm fucking done. You know what I'm saying? I'm fucking done. When you see the first episode, it basically tells you how the whole thing is going to go. I did not see all whatever nine, ten episodes, whatever it has or whatever the case is. I only got to episode three and I, got, I was done. I was, I, I was pissed off. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Basically... This beautiful black uh, Afro Latina sister, right? She is living in the in, in 1646, and she's a slave in Colombia. She's a slave, okay? She's a slave. All right, cool. On top of that, she's a witch. All right, even better. All right, cool because you know she probably took those those African traditions you know with her and you know started implementing it you know what i'm saying because i'm telling you like i always said latinos and and black people are not that far apart but anyway so she you know she took that and you you go through it you see that her uncle is teaching her how to heal people and all that were herbs and and spices and, and and flowers and all that right so she's well connected to you know her african roots she's well connected to um, the plant life. She's well connected and she's well informed on how she should, you know, maneuver certain things. So in the in the first, this is all happening in the first episode. Shorty is on top of a of a, a you know of a lineup. You know how they used to sell slaves, and a a white guy. Oh shit! A son of a slave owner. He's also a slave owner himself. He. You know, he doesn't like how the, the guy selling her is, is treating her. So what he ends up doing is buying her. Oh, shit. Wow. She got saved because of somebody that at, at that time who actually felt sympathy for her. Okay, cool. Whatever. You already see the bullshit happening, right? Later on, you start finding out that the slave owner's son who's also a slave owner because he bought her that makes him a slave owner and the slave which her name is Carmen 
they are actually in a romantic relationship. They start leaving little notes on top of doors and shit. You know what I'm saying? Little things here and there, here and there, here and there. And then one day they decide to, you know, meet. They always meet at night or something, but one day they decide to meet and their shit gets foiled. That's it. The jig is up. It's over. You know what I mean? Like it's over. So uh, they say, yo, we got, we got a killer because you know, you're not supposed to be together whatever the case is, but they love each other and all this other bullshit. The, yo, they literally sentenced her to death. This kid says, I cannot live without her. His father, whoever comes out of nowhere, shoots him dead. She, you know, she's the straw. Oh my God. And then she, uh, you know, she's told while she's waiting to be executed, she's told by the prisoner next to her, listen, what do you want to do? Do you want to travel through time and prevent this from happening? What do you want? Shorty didn't say I want to be free. She didn't say, give me more power so I could get myself out of the situation and free all my other people. She didn't say, I wish, uh, you know, slavery was not a thing. She didn't even say that, Hey, let's be our own little Haiti. You know what I'm saying? The Haitian revolution. You know what I'm saying? Let's start that shit off. You know what I'm saying? With all her powers. How badass would that be? She would have been, you know, the star of like the black Avengers. You know what I'm saying? Of the, of the Netflix universe. You, you know what I'm saying? That shit would have been hot. You know what I mean? Shorty came out. She was like the, the, you know, the Harriet Tubman of that time. You know what I'm saying? Nah, none of that shit. The bitch said, I want to go back and save my slave master. That's what I want to do. I want to go back in time. I swear to God, I'm not making this shit up. The bitch said, I want to go back in time to save my slave master. I swear to God, I, I had to rewind it like five times because I'm like, this is, this has to be fucking, this has to be a joke. She dead. I said, I want to go back in time to save my slave. I, I couldn't fucking believe it. I couldn't fucking believe it. And the guy said, okay, just go to the future. Give this rock, you know, some necklace rock to a, uh, to somebody or whatever in the future. And I got you. Don't worry about it. you go back. So he will never die and all that. She gets executed. She gets burned up and then she wakes up in the future. You know what I'm saying? And the bullshit gets even fucking better. This is still the first episode. The bullshit gets better. Shorty don't know where she at. She don't even know what year she's in and all of this other bullshit. Things happen, blah, blah, blah. Police are chasing her. Um, uh, because they, que they question her because she ran out of the hospital after they found whatever they're chasing her. It, that's another allegory. It's like slave patrol. You know what I'm saying? Like those old school slave patrols and all that. And when, <laughs> when I swear to God, she cuts a corner and she ends up back at the slave quarters that she was living in, but they turned the slave quarters into a hostel. I swear to fucking God, this is a real thing. They turned the slave quarters and I started dying. I'm like, no fucking way that they turned the slave quarters into a hostel and the bitch feels like she's right at home. Are you fucking kidding me? Who the fuck wrote this bullshit? And guess what? I end up finding out everything who directed it, who wrote it, a bunch of white people, bunch of, bunch of white supremacists. And they like this bullshit. You know what I mean? And the thing is, it's interesting that it's actually set in Latin America because a lot of Latin people don't think they only think that slavery was a American thing. It was actually worldwide. Everything that happened to black people in America happened to Latin people in, in you know, South America and Central America as well. Uh, slavery was the same thing. We experienced the same thing. There was a, there was obviously some historical differences, you know, some things here and there, here and there. I got into that to other time, but everything happened the same. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, uh, so then, then shorty, you know, 
she 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 wants to she wants to be there and all that and she goes back to the same door that she used to slip notes in she didn't find nothing and all that and she writes her slave master a letter of love letter and all this other bullshit i'm telling you right now that movie was fucking basura that shit was fucking trash i hated every minute of it i hated every fucking second of it the shit is called Siempre Bruja. That shit should have been called Siempre Bedwinch. Because the, the, the bitch was fucking infatuated with her slave owner. She has all these wild powers where she could fucking levitate, heal people. You know what I'm saying? She's like she's like um the the, the Afro Latina version of like you know a uh, a uh, uh, be uh, like the that witch chick from Avengers, you know what I'm saying? Like Scarlet or whatever. You know what I'm saying? She, the bitch was like, you know, floating, healing, knowing the future when you touch motherfuckers and all that. Yo, you couldn't, you couldn't just use all that shit and free your own people. But that's the thing. When you live in a system of white supremacy, they don't want to empower you. They don't want to put you to, uh, to that part where you can do these things. Because remember, books, TV, movies, these are ways, well, the new, you know, the newer ways. These are ways, the modern ways, to indoctrinate a person. If you keep on watching images of yourself as submissive, as a victim, as a person that can't do um, everything that you want to do, who, are, is o- who is always subjugated, you're going to keep on seeing yourself just like that. You're going to keep on seeing yourself further as a victim, further as a, uh, you know, as a person enslaved. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to start seeing white people as a savior that's the reason why whenever they enslaved us they beat our one language out of us they beat uh they actually beat our religion out of us and made us you know worship white gods white deities you know what i'm saying so with that being said if everything else makes sense you know what i mean everything else makes sense so like you know so, so this is all during the first episode and all that and then, you know, she decides the second episode, she, uh, you know, some uh, murder mystery is happening. And then she decides to actually live in the hostile, but in the slate, like in the, in the dungeon part of it. And she's totally fine. And we end up finding out that the dungeon part that, that everybody neglects in that whole hostile was actually her room because she finds something in the floorboard. Dude, I, I got, I was done. The third episode came. I didn't even want to see the shit. I was like, fuck this shit. I'm done. I'm fucking done. This is some bullshit. I'm, I don't want to see my people like this. You know what I'm saying? And it's not a coincidence that they put this bullshit, this fucking basura. It's not a fucking coincidence. They put this bullshit out on black history month. It's not a coincidence. This is, this is say, telling every Latin person that you are not different. This is telling every Latin person that just because you classify yourself as white, you see yourself as white. Guess fucking what? We still see you as black. You know what I'm saying? There's no difference. There's no difference. And we shouldn't even be seeing ourselves as something different. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I saw a bunch. I I hated the whole thing. I was, I was fucking done. I was fucking done. You know what I'm saying? That oh, that always a witch bullshit is fucking trap. First of all, shout out to the actress. I don't know if she's on some cool shit, but listen, shout out to the actress because she's fucking beautiful. You know what I'm saying? I was infatuated with her hair the whole fucking time. I was like, damn, I love her hairstyle. Shit. You know what I mean? But this th- this whole thing basically plays on this whole new thing called slave play. For those of you who haven't heard what slave play is, slave play is this basically this sexual race plantation slave play type of, uh, you know, uh, a fetish. You know what I'm saying? It's this thing where I get dehumanized, uh, a black person gets dehumanized, and a white person is the, the dominant one. You know what I mean? It's supposed to be a sexual fetish. And they actually making this stupid bullshit into like a play or something like that. Um, and yeah, they actually making this shit into a play, the New York theater workshop. And, uh, it began like November 19th 
and it's called slave play you know what i'm saying actually this is not this isn't something uh, new you know it's actually pretty old it's they uh um you know a bunch of porn websites even have this as a category believe it or not it's called like race play or something like that where during sex uh the white person dehumanizes it has to be somebody black by the way and if there's nobody black they'll get a latin person it, it makes no difference but it has to be somebody more melanated you know what i mean so the white person has to dehumanize the person during sex you know what i'm saying it's supposed to like it's like this fetish or what the whole thing is bullshit the whole fucking thing is bullshit and i, and I didn't like a minute of it i did not like a goddamn fucking minute of it the whole thing was bullshit i didn't like it i did not like it whatsoever you know what i'm saying like nah hell no so that that was a uh, you know that was that bullshit you know what i'm saying and actually the thing that actually you know kept me on netflix because i was about to fucking sign my shit out i was like go f go fuck yourself was trigger warning Yep, actually, trigger warning. Uh, Killer Mike's. If you guys don't know who Killer Mike is, I don't know where the fuck y'all been at, but I'm telling you, Killer Mike is the shit. Uh, he is like, I, I love his speeches. Like, I even go on online and just hear him talk. I actually heard him recently in the Breakfast Club. Shout out to Killer Mike. He has, uh, you know, a show, nine episodes. It's called Trigger Warning. And he basically goes. It's pro black all the fucking way. I love every minute of it. I love every minute of it. The thing is that there's this one part, which actually I was planning on making an episode about it. This is one part where he, it's called, I think was a white gang privilege. I think it's called, I believe it's called white gang privilege where he basically makes a statement saying that white gangs in the united states right always have the privilege of keep on to keep on doing their criminal activity and to the point where they actually legitimize it and actually gets to the point where they actually become a corporation white gangs oh and he gives a perfect example one example there's multiple i could pull up multiple but he gives one example of the hell's angels and how the Hells Angels actually, um, you know, it's a, it's a gang. That's basically what it is. It's a fucking gang. Um, I don't, I don't want to hear that. Well, the Hells Angels, they started out, every other gang started out helping the community and it gets corrupt later on. Every gang started that way. Don't give me that bullshit. The blood started that way. The Crip started that way. Latin King started that way. The Nieta started that way. Don't give me that bullshit. That's, that's how they all started. You know what I'm saying? That's all, that's how they all started. But anyway, he gives an example of the Hells Angels and their criminal activity and all this other bullshit. And I was like, throughout the whole time, I was like, holy shit. There was, um, I, I'm gonna get to that part. But the, the first episode is him trying to live black, eat black, basically go to all black businesses, you know? And he found it extremely hard to do so. Um, and he, he gives a history of it, how, uh, the dollar stays in every other community, but the black community, the $1 stays in the black community for only six hours, which is crazy. Um, to be completely honest, I don't know how long the dollar stays in the Latin community. I I'll say, I'm gonna just guesstimate. I'll probably say like a week or not even maybe maybe six days or something. The reason why I say that is because there's a lot of, I'm from the Bronx. There's a lot of Latin businesses around, you know? If you don't go to a barber shop with full Dominicans and who own, that's owned by Dominican, you go to a bodega with Papi on the corner, you know, on the behind the counter. You know what I'm saying? If you don't go to that, then you'll go to a Dominican restaurant, Cuchifrito spot. You know, there's a lot of Latin businesses, so, I, I wouldn't say there's there's more uh, access, you know what I'm saying? And I wouldn't mind shopping black, but I don't know where to go. And that's the that's the perfect, you know, that's the perfect example right there because I don't know where to go. Um, there's parts in the Bronx where it's like little little uh, little Jamaica, you know, on 233rd. 
uh, on the on the other side of the Bronx and all that. But anyway, so with that being said, um, you know that was the first episode. And, you know, it opened my my eyes. Like they were like, uh, um, he gives a history of it, and he basically says uh, the black community was a lot stronger during seg- uh, segregation, and when segregation en- um, ended, and they began to integrate. Not only did they, um, the black people integrate into society, but the money came along with it. And I believe I heard Nelly Fuller talk about this, that integration was actually a trick word. And it was a trick because in reality, we wasn't supposed to, black people wasn't supposed to integrate. Their money was supposed to integrate, not, not the people themselves. But, um, so, you know, he was like, segregation was a good thing and stuff like that, but I also believe that um, having a code of conduct, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because Asian people do it. They always do it amongst themselves. Jewish people do it always amongst themselves. You know, Latin people do it for the most part, always amongst themselves. Black people got to do it all amongst themselves, you know, and, and start and start doing, you know, start doing that and start circling their money amongst the community. But uh, that's the, that was the first episode. One of the episodes which I replayed maybe four or five times was that w- uh, white gang pro- privilege. And he, you know, he, he, uh, he talks about how, you know, white gangs legitimize blah, 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 and all this other bullshit, right? So he decided to uh, have uh, a soda named from the Crips, call it Cola. And he also, later on in that episode, did the same thing for bloods so it was a blood pop or something like that right i've been to this day since this recording i've been scouring online to find out where i can buy some cripple cola and some blood pop i swear to fucking god they show you how these kids you know get a logo uh get a get a get a, a font and start distributing it all around the world. You know what I'm saying? They start um, start distributing it locally. I think they're gonna get a website because Killer Mike say, "Oh, a website is coming later on." You know, but apparently this soda is a lot more um, better for you than regular Coca Cola. You know what I'm saying? But that was extremely interesting. I loved that episode. There was one part of the episode where Killer Mike had a focus group. And basically, part of the focus group was um, the people who invented it are, are behind a two-way mirror, and they're seeing the reaction of the people. You know what I'm saying? They loved the soda until they started seeing the name, and they were like, "Whoa!" And a bunch of white guys. There was one Latin person there, and that dude became the most racist motherfucker up in that place. He started representing white supremacy to the fullest. Whenever you see somebody being very combative and always questioning you about the beliefs and everything that you're saying, that's a big indicator. You feel me? That's a huge indicator. Wait a minute. Something's going on here. He's not on my side. You know what I'm saying? So he was, he started doing all this other bullshit. Oh, well, I don't, well, I don't believe that. You know what I'm saying? Until, you know, my man checked him or whatever the case is. But anyway, the, um, the thing is, uh, you know, they legitimizing and I, I love that episode. So that's the, I, I've, I've been trying to find, yo, if you guys find the, find the website, please send me the link. I've been wanting to buy that shit for like days now since I seen the episode. Holy shit. I will buy, I will literally buy like six cases of it. I'm dead serious. Three of each. I'm for real. You know what I'm saying? And then I'll wait for them to make a Latin King, Latin King, uh, um, cola, you know what I'm saying? A uh, 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 Latin pop, you know, you know what I mean? Like I'll wait for that, but yo, I'll buy like fucking six cases of that shit. You know what I mean? But you know, shout out to killer Mike. That's the only thing that saved Netflix from, <laughs> from, uh, not, you know, for me canceling the subscription, you know what I'm saying? Because from that moment on, I was like, this is some bullshit. I could watch everything y'all got for free. And I don't have to pay y'all. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that killer might trigger warning one. Hopefully he gets a season two. But that's the thing that saved it. Now, moving on to a next topic that 
I uh, was researching, I didn't really put my two cents into it, was that guy from Empire. He, um, so they said Jesse Smollett from Empire hospitalized after possible homophobic attack. That was the, that was the news that was circulating, right? And when you read it, there was, I even commented, something doesn't sound right. Now this is what the facts are, right? This is what the facts are. That he, w- he was in Chicago, walking around, he was going to Subway, right? Two men with ski mask on and MAGA hats saw him and started yelling racial slurs at him, calling him the N-word and a faggot. Beat him up and grabbed the noose. They had a noose already out of nowhere. Keep on, the, and they kept on insulting him and beating him. Grabbed the noose, put it, uh, put it around his neck, and then left. That's what the, that's exactly what it was. And then apparently uh, the Fox headquarters ended up getting an envelope with like um, magazine cutouts. So they won't trace the handwriting saying that you will be next and all the, all right, listen, something about it didn't add up. You know what I'm saying? I said that shit when, when it broke. And when I read it, I said, what the fuck? Something about it doesn't add up. You know what I'm saying? I, first of all, I don't, let me just say I'm not for, or I'm not, you know, I am not happy about any attack no attack should be happening whatsoever to anybody all right so i'm not condoning anything i'm simply questioning the validity of what the fuck is going on that's it that's all i'm doing right so the 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 you know those are the facts right so i i kind of you know started digging 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 this hasn't been confirmed yet but for what i found Apparently, this wasn't no homophobic, you know, racial attack. What it was, it was that this is just rumors. You know how Hollywood likes to clean, you know, clean shit up and they just make stuff up so they could protect the artists. Apparently, uh, this uh, Jesse, this guy was actually um, fucking some other dude. And the boyfriend found out, followed him and beat him up. That's basically what happened. You know what I'm saying? But then they, you know, this whole thing got concocted or whatever the case is. Um, like I said, if that's the, is that true? If that's the case. All right, cool. That's not, you know, you shouldn't be beating people up. Like, you know what I mean? If it's the racial attack, that's true. All right, listen, that's still fucked up. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't happen whatsoever. My, my biggest thing, this is what it was. This is what it is. My biggest thing is that some, Parts of it didn't even add up. You in Chicago, walking by yourself at 2 in the morning. First of all, Chicago's cold as shit. It's like negative 55. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't even make sense. Now you go on a fucking subway. And now these people with ski masks and MAGA hats on are just rolling around with the news randomly? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Part of it didn't make sense. So I was questioning it. You know what I'm saying? I was questioning it. But anyway, to the main topic. Should Latin people use the N-word? Now, the reason why I wanted to make this episode, first of all, I didn't even think about making this episode until somebody actually was listening to one of my other episodes. And they hit me up on Instagram. They said, Yo, bro, you know, I like what you say. I'm a supporter, but I got an issue. What's up? Yo, you, uh, I know you from the Bronx. I know you from New York and my man was from like uh, Florida or whatever, but I got an issue with you. You, you know, you say the N word like casually, you know, in your, in your, in your vocabulary and your conversation and how you talk. And I'm like, oh yeah. I was like, um, listen, it's because the, how I grew up, where I grew up, I didn't have an issue with that. You know what I'm saying? Nobody checked me for it. Nobody told me anything about it. Nobody told me I couldn't use it. You know what I'm saying? He was like, he's like, yeah, I understand that, but I don't appreciate you using the N word. 
because even though you might say that you're black or native, I don't like you using it because you haven't experienced a black struggle. You, uh, your people weren't called that. You know what I'm saying? And that got me thinking. That right there got me thinking. And he brings up a great fucking point. Should Latin people use the N word? It's, you know, it's simple. Should Latin people use the N word? That's it. You know, and I was actually thinking, like, he's right. Um, even though Latin people experience the same thing black people did, but in certain areas were very different. You know, we experienced slavery. We experienced, you know, our families getting ripped apart. We experienced all that other stuff, but the thing is, th this is where the difference come in. In Central South America, it isn't as, how can I say, bl not blatant, but the hi uh, the historical part of it is kind of like swept away. You know what I'm saying? It's swept away. It's not really talked about. Here in America, it's so ingrained into the fabric of this country that wherever you turn, you re you're reminded about it. You know what I'm saying? So I will understand why some Latin people will just not even think about that or forget that. You know what I mean? Especially here you know, in America. And I was like, shit, he's fucking right. And I, 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 from there, I started doing my research, but also I, I ran across a couple of YouTube videos where even Latin people were even like, Hey, listen, should Takashi 69 use the N word? And oh, should Latin people use the N word? Even China Max said, I stopped using the N word because he got, he got, you know, he got questioned for it. And I was like, shit, just because I, where I grew up and how I grew up doesn't give me basically the pass to actually use it. I shouldn't use it at all. At all. Obviously it's going to slip out, you know, because of my conditioning and how I grew up, where I grew up. You know what I'm saying? It's going to slip out, obviously, but I shouldn't say it at all. It shouldn't even be part of my vocabulary whatsoever. So that's something that I decided, you know, internally to do. So I've been, you know, self editing myself, you know what I mean? So this is the question I wanted to raise. Now me talking about it, I am not going to do it any service, any, any good support, any, anything. I shouldn't even talk about this. You know what I'm saying? I should bring in people who did live and who are more, way more melanated than me, who are black, who actually have a right and have a voice. And I wanted to hear their opinion. So I brought in two people. They're from Twitter. They're my followers. I interact with them almost on a day, almost on a day to day basis, you know, sharing, retweeting, all this other stuff. And I decided to ask them now just for context sake, I recorded this separately. I recorded our conversation. I'm um, not together. I didn't record both of them together because their schedules didn't coincide. So I recorded it separately. All right. Just for context sake, you know what I'm saying? And I decided to ask them the same question. Yo, should, you know, Latin people use the N word and I want you guys to hear their raw, raw, raw response. Okay. I'm going to bring in Brie first, and then I'm going to bring in Sway and you're going to hear, you know, both of their opinion and both of them have the same opinion by the way, but I want you guys to hear where they're coming from and you know, then you guys could come up with your own conclusion. But my main thing was I shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't even talk about this topic without actually bringing in the people that white supremacists and white supremacy put a label on. 
You know what I'm saying? I will make this discussion. I will have this discussion become an injustice. I wouldn't uh, give it, um, you know, any legs to stand on if I would have just talked about it. You know what I'm saying? So without further ado, here's my two friends, Bree and Sway. I'm great. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, the reason why I have Brandy here is because of the title of this episode, should Latin people use the N word? So we're going to have a discussion and we're going to figure out, not figure out, but we're going to discuss on should we do uh, use it? Should we not or whatnot? So, um, Brandy, let, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like what's your ethnicity? Uh, where do you grow I, um... up? Oh, wow. I'm black. I won't say African American. I'll say I'm black. Yeah. Because I don't, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, and then I, I grew you. up here in <laughs> Baltimore, Baltimore, Maryland. Mm. If I'm familiar with Baltimore, Maryland, you know we are rough here. We're just, it's a, it's a wild place, but, you know, predominantly black area. And that's basically a little about me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Now, what is your thought on, on on this question? Should Latin people use the N word? No, mm. I don't think nobody should use it. And my my take on that because there's a lot of negative connotations behind it. Mm-hmm. And basically, and it was used to degrade and demean us. Mm. And you know, plan or otherwise. I mean, I really don't like the word is a use and everything, but I really think that it shouldn't be used at all. Mm. It, sh- it should never be used. Mm. Never. And uh, I understand that, you know, you're saying that nobody could use it or whatever the case is. Uh, mm-hmm. And I, you know, obviously we all get the reason why, uh, you know, it was changed from the ER to the A at the end, you know? Uh, yeah. Does that yeah. Is, does that still does that still give you a negative connotation toward towards it? I I I really don't like the word. Honestly, I really don't like the word. But you know, sometimes it's a means, and I might slip up and use it because it's on a meme or whatever. It's not that I made the meme, but it's just there. But it is a point in the meme. Mm. But I don't like it either way. And I guess because a lot of people figure because. They changed the spelling of it. It's like that's taking our power back. So they're like, when they call themselves using it, it's like it doesn't mean anything because then they'll stop saying it. Mm. But then they think it's okay because they're like, you you refer to each other as the N word. So why we can't use it? No. If we stop, I think they'll stop. Mm. You know, mm. Mm. I think they'll stop. Mm. Okay. Um, who, uh, who, who do you. Who do you think should get a pass for using the N word? You said you said you're saying nobody, nobody, nobody at all, nobody, mm. nobody at all. Mm. You know, because that's just like us taking what they might say to each other and using it on them, and that's and it's, it's disrespectful. It's yeah. disrespectful both ways. Got it, got it. Right. Um, but one thing we can say, black. Um, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. white people should never say it. Should ne- <laughs> never, never use it, say it, <laughs> think it. <laughs> <laughs> not even mumble it <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. but but the um but other people say is i heard this part of the argument where the n-word is should be black exclusive what do you what do you say about that black exclusive that's the first i've ever heard but i don't think it should be at all i mean i don't i just don't think that it should be said between for nobody Nobody, mm-hmm. and now you know we got with the orange bastard running around, and now everybody is you know they they showing us, oh, so they think they can say it without any con- you know, without any actions behind it because they say it and they think they can get away with it. And mm. I don't think that it's, it should be exclusive to nobody. It just needs to. It just doesn't need to be said. So what's going on, Sway? How you doing? Everything good, man. Como estas, mi hermano? Uh, ya tu sabe, you know? Ya tu sabe. Gracias. No, Muchas gracias. No. Um, now, now, the, now the question. Should Latin people use the N-word? Uh, my answer on that altogether is no. Mm. Um, my thing is, um, at, at the end of the day, none of us should be using it. Because at the end of the day, if we understand linguistics and we understand morphology... Uh, we understand that this is not a new a new term. 
as far as um, uh, us being prisoners of war, I don't even want to use the word slavery. We're prisoners of war, mm -hmm. both here in America and in the Caribbean or in the West Indies, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, if you uh, if you really look at this in a real way, and like I said, just get to the real facts of this, us as far as the terms, the the cast terms that they put on us as far as uh, calling you a uh, Latino or calling. Uh, your sister Latina are calling me a uh, uh, black African American. There's no difference between us. The only difference between us is language, mm -hmm. culture, and distance. Mm -hmm. That's it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, if we actually go into the word and go even look into the Bible, it's actually in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You go to Acts 13 1, and Jesus' original disciples, they're calling them nigger. And it's spelled spell it N I G E R. Now, you can't sit there and tell me, oh, it's Niger. It was from the Niger. There was no J yeah, sound. Yeah, exactly. The letter, was the no... letter J itself didn't come in until after 1565, so there was no J sound. It was G. And mm. if you look up the word in Greek in this original text, it means black. Mm. So they were calling Jesus' disciples niggers. Mm -hmm. But, of course, your of course your pastor on Sunday is not going to tell you that. Yeah. So you go look up an Acts 13.1 and tell me if I'm lying. Now and they were doing that. Us, as we're, we're going to sit here and have we're going to sit here and have, you know, this whole crazy thing of well, well you get to use it. This person didn't get to use it. Like I said, nobody should be using it. Period. Because of what else would come. Mm. Now to the to the 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 root of where it came to where we were using on a regular basis, the word was negus, and the the Ethiopian or the Kushite language, which is um, Amartic or G's. They use the word negus, N-E-G-U-S, which means it was some type of sovereignty, which means some type of royalty or king or whatnot is what that word meant. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, us for what we use it now is just completely derogatory, has nothing to do with sovereignty or anything. It's just a derogatory term. Mm. So regardless of who you are, it's going to come off as regardless of who you are. Mm. So why should we sit here and force ourselves to use it when we already know it's used to demonize us? Both mm. black and brown. Mm, mm. That's insane. So, um, the reason why I even brought up, you know, this this topic, and I wanted to bring up this topic, is because, you know, I grew up. Uh, I'm I'm from the Bronx. You know, I grew up in the Bronx. This whole sure. time I grew up, you know, it's predominantly black and Latin, right? So the yes, this whole time I grew up, you know, I've been called the N word. You know. I've been, you know, been referred to the N-word and stuff like that. So I thought it was good. Mm -hmm. It was normal. You know what I'm saying? Until mm -hmm. I, when I was like 11 years old, I experienced the other side of the N-word coming from um, coming from a little Russian kid. Uh, my mom went mm -hmm. to, a, yeah, my mom went to a, like a little uh, salon or whatever. And the, yeah. the, the Russian kids, uh, you know, th they were kids of the, the owner. So they were outside playing. So I went outside and... And they were kind of hesitant towards me. And then that's when they used that word. And it felt different. I never heard that mm. word before. And it came with a negative energy. So I'm like, wait a minute. There's a, there's a difference to this word. You know what I'm saying? And mind you, I'm 11. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, right, I, don't, right. I don't even know what 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 is what. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. when I heard well, that. Well, most, of those, most of those experiences like you just had, they, they put into us when we are young. So mm -hmm. Go ahead and set the tone for us from the get go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You and understand what I'm saying? It's more or less a psychology thing. Yeah, and the thing you is, what and, I'm yeah, and, and the thing is, that white kid, he knew what he was saying, you know, and he knew what he was doing, you know what I'm saying? And the mm -hmm. the fact that he saw me and actually associated that word towards me is the reason why I tell a lot of Latin people, listen. We are no different. You know what I'm saying? There's no yes, difference sir. between us. There's no what's difference. The, what, 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 people, people say, um, well, what's, what, is, what is your, what, what is your, um, what they say, nationality? Was it Puerto Rican, Dominican? What, what yeah, exactly I'm, is it? I, know, I'm, I, remember, I remember you told me before, you said you were part Ecuadorian, right? Yeah, I'm, ha I'm half Ecuadorian and half Dominican. Half Dominican. Okay, okay. Now, we do understand that when we talk about, um, when we talk about the slave trade and everything, 80% of the people that came in, or excuse me, 85% of what came in came towards the West Indies mm. and South America area. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There's no such thing. There's literally no such thing as a Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. Puerto Rico 
translates to rich poor. So you're telling me that I'm like, what? Are, what are you? You're a rich poor. That makes no sense. Mm. Mm. The, the island, the island of what we call the Dominican Republic in Haiti, it wasn't even called that before. It's it Española, right? Okay. Yeah. Now we got to understand that those exact same people that they went and they had, you know, our ancestors that they had um, as prisoners. They all came from West Africa. We're, we're, like, we're, we're, we're focusing too much. We're, we're focusing too much on where we're at instead of where we originally came from. Mm. And that's what's messing us up. Not to cut you off, but I'm saying this. I said because you came up and it was said so much, and then they referred to you. You thought it, you probably didn't think anything of it. Like you know, mm-hmm. you know, they saying it to me. I can address them. That it's a thing of not knowing. You know, and you hand it all your life, you're thinking it's, it's just a part of everyday language. But people don't look deeper mm. and see what's really going on or what it really means. They're not looking past that. That's true. They're just like, oh, it's, just nothing. it's nothing until you have to really tell them it's a lot of something. So <laughs> just knowing, just experiencing that, just experiencing that and actually seeing, seeing the differences and how it came across with hate. And it came across mm. as vile and, and, and vitriolous, you know, just knowing that yeah. and then coming back, you know, to my block and not, you know, not experiencing that. It was like, OK, wait a minute. So this is what's going on, you know, like, what the hell is going yeah, on? It was an eye opener. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, I mean, mm-hmm. to come from where they said it in a way where you knew it was not it was a friendly thing to say and to go to where they they said it they said it in a hateful way. Uh huh. Yeah, it, it, it's it's truly an eye opener. Definitely, mm. I'll mm. say. Yeah, because I've experienced it myself. Yeah. I will literally see uh, Dominicana, who is darker than me, tell me that she's not black. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? Yep that before and so you know i'm not dealing with no morenos i'm like whoa like really yep, yep. and it's darker than me that's what i'm saying so the yep. psychology of it is what has just pushed us back just completely yep you understand and, what i'm and, saying and we're the, the exact same people the yep. only about to say some of us some of us are darker some of us are browner some of us are lighter but yep. at the end of the day our ancestors had to deal with complete and i mean complete utter hell mm-hmm. complete and, utter hell because there was nothing but absolute Carn- nothing but absolute genocide and rape going on. Period. Yeah, and that's the and you reason- have to understand the people that came in. Yeah, they would they would rape the women. They would kill the men, rape the women, and the offspring that came out of uh, what you call a mulatto nowadays. They had their people enslaved because they're like, well, I'm not black, I'm not European. I'm like, what? I guess I'm I'm just this, and they have them as yeah, 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 same yeah. thing, and every on every other island, yeah. mainly. You know, in the Dominican Republic and Haiti now, which they have split up in the division, saying, no, you're Haitian, you're Dominican, on one island, and put a borderline. Mm-hmm. And now they're going to war with each other. Well, you're Haitian, well, you're Domin- you're, we're the same people. The yeah. only thing that's keeping us different is the language and the culture. That yeah. is it. And- you're the same people. That's why I said, I'm. You, you're my brother. Yep. Regardless of who wants to hear it or who wants the, the facts of the matter, you're my brother. Yeah. So you're, 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 the, you're my brother. You're West Indian. You're my brother. I'm part Jamaican. You're my brother. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no, I feel there you. Is no, there is no, there is no, the only division that we have is the hatred and the confusion. That's the division. Yep. Nelly Fuller said that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, and, and we, we're so distracted and so, so upset and so confused and so uneducated at the same time, a lot of us, that. We don't even know what direction to go in. Yeah, Jesus, brother, you are dropping some jewel. You should be on Hidden Colors. Um, hey, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you are dropping some jewels. Jesus Christ! Yeah, now, like I say, and it deal with the facts, bro. We ain't got time. We ain't got time for faith and myths and all that. No, bro. that That's is true. No, we got to go with the facts. You absolutely, you absolutely right. Is as far as the the black and the Latino community, we need to be embracing each other even more for the simple fact that. Your regular quote unquote language is Spanish. Mine is quote unquote English. We're going back and forth using languages that was both forced on us. Yep. Your original language in the Dominican in the, in the, in the Dominican island six hundred years ago, you weren't speaking Spanish. Mm-hmm. You were speaking a dialect of Taíno. 
Mm-hmm. And then they sat there and called you a Taino Indian. No, mm-hmm. Taino was the language. Okay? Mm-hmm. The Arawuka, Arawa, the Arawa. That's who that that's who was there, who've been there for thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years. Mm. We should be embracing ourselves even more because at the end of the day, we're both speaking languages that were both forced on us. Mm, that's a fact. So yeah, um, thank you for coming on. Can you uh, give the people? Thank you so much. Can you give the people your Twitter handle? Okay, I am the Queen B. You can follow me. I'll follow back. You can meet me there. <laughs> All right. You can meet me there. And, and thank you so much, to... Ray, for having me on. Oh yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. Um, you can reach me right there. Uh, the Twitter page is Suede Santoro. Suede underscore Santoro. S A N T O R O. Yeah, um, follow him on Twitter. If you guys want to know some historical facts, he drops them literally almost every day. I learn every day. Yeah, every day he tags me on them and all that. And I, you know, always like and share it so you guys could, you know, see if you guys are on my page and you see what I'm, I'm retweeting is because of this man right here. He knows his stuff, you know, he knows his stuff. Know. And, you know, shout out to you. Thank you for coming on. All right, guys. So that was the discussion that me sway and brie had again for context uh that was a conversation that i had separate with each one of them i'm just saying that just for context you know what i'm saying i had you know separate conversation with each one of them i said the same questions i asked both of them you know what i'm saying so just for i don't i'm only saying that for context sake but remember if you want to follow brie she's on twitter at i am that queen b and uh, also sway he's at sway underscore santoro so hit them up you know uh follow them they'll follow back and uh, remember guys this is a whole conversation that i want to have you know tell me guys what you guys think about it and you can follow me at instagram and twitter at the same name radical underscore latino underscore i'm gonna catch you guys later Thank you.